It is easy and desirable to examine the nervous system quickly. Don't worry about the very long examination you learned at medical school. You can do that, but in real life you want to get through it in just two or three minutes. And what I want to show you is a way of screening the entire nervous system in just a couple of minutes, and then you can tack on relevant pieces depending on your patient's symptoms, memory, numb hand, foot drop, pain in the back, depending on what the patient has. You're going to adjust your examination to each individual person. You can't do everything in every patient. I like to break it down into legs, arms, face and on the couch. Beginning with the legs, I have the patient fully clothed, wearing normal shoes, standing with their feet together, both the front of the foot and the back of the foot touching, not standing to attention. Please can you stand with your feet together and close your eyes. You need to be ready to catch the patient because if they have got rhombogism, they go down like a Del Boy in a bar, which is not such a good thing to do. Uh, if they can do that, the next thing to do is uh, a tandem gait or heel-toe walking, which is actually a rather more sensitive test that patients find a little bit easier. If they can't do that, then they're in a bit of trouble with their balance. Open your eyes. Walk heel to toe. Very good. Then I move on to sneakily, without telling the patient what I'm doing, testing the power of plantar flexion with them walking on tiptoes and the power of dorsiflexion with them walking on their heels. Can you walk on tiptoes, please? And on your heels. And it feels to the patient like you're testing balance, but really you're testing muscle power. It's good to be sneaky and not say what you're testing. That way you get objectivity. And then finally for the legs, I ask the patient to hop one foot then the other, and I do it too, so it's a bit less humiliating. Very good, thank you. Uh, I get my exercise that way. Then I move on to the arms. And I start by looking for drift. So the patient holds their hands out in front of them with the palms up as though they're supporting a tray. Hands flat like you're holding a tray. Very nice. And close your eyes. Keep the hands where they are for a moment. And ideally, the, there should be no movement of the arms. The, the arms should not uh, move downwards or upwards or, or rotate inwards. Uh, that means there's, there's something the matter, usually with the brain. And if the hands stay in the right place, which in most people they do, I then move on to test both sensation and uh, cerebellar testing coordination. So with the patient with their hands out, I usually, and their eyes closed, I will touch uh, one middle finger and ask them to touch their nose with that. And then in the other hand, I'll go for the uh, ring finger and get them to touch the nose with that. And with your eyes still closed, touch your nose with this fingertip and with this fingertip. Good. And you've covered quite a lot of ground in just a couple of seconds. After that, they open their eyes and I get them to play the piano and the fingers should all move independently and I get them to, to, to tap their hand uh, so that should be nice and quick uh, so the patient can quickly do that. And that's really enough for cerebellar testing if you're screening people. Play the piano. Tap your hand, quick. Lovely other hand. Very good. Then I move on to muscle tone, which is quite easily done, looking for a supinator catch as you uh, rotate the arm to and fro. And then you can quite quickly look for cogwheel rigidity, where you wind the wrist around with one hand, and then the patient waves the contralateral hand about. May I have your hand, please? Let it go loose and floppy. Now lift your left hand in the air and put it down, and lift your right hand in the air, and put it down. That's good, thank you. And that will bring out cogwheel rigidity, which is quite a, a subtle sign in Parkinson's disease.
After that, I finished with the hands. Moving on to the face, I normally start by quickly looking at the visual fields. Uh, I don't bother with the nasal fields, just the temporal fields with both eyes open. That will pick up almost everything. And then I look at eye movements. Look at my face, please. Point at the fingers which move. Look at my finger, keep your head still, follow the finger. Having done eye movements, I ask the patient to screw their eyes up tight and see if there's any facial weakness. When they open the eyes, you can see if the pupils respond, and at that point you can also look for Horner syndrome. Then quickly lower face, get them to grin. After they've done that, stick their tongue out, and you're done with the face. After that, the patient lies on the couch, and this is, of course, what most people think of as the neurological examination. It's the bit that tends to get done by most doctors, and so the patient has their shoes off, no other clothes need to come off, and you look at the fundi, and you do the tendon reflexes in the arms and the legs and the plantar responses. I'd like to look in your eyes, please. Can you look straight up at the ceiling? And now can you look a little to the right? Thank you. And now your reflexes, just let your hands flop. Finally, you won't like this bit very much. Thank you very much. And you're done.